Eh, screw it. <laughs> I'll just do it right now. Hello, everybody. How are we all doing this fine, fantastic evening? Why is it centered on this row for so long? I don't know. But here we are in... Let me just turn off studio mode real quick. We're back here in the gold saucer because the Make It Rain event has occurred once more. What does that mean? Well, that means every single event here, whether it be... Uh, she in two minutes, there's going to be a thing happening. Uh, what is that thing going to be? Let me just zip over here via dancer. Hello, gatekeeper. What's it going to be? Uh, leap of faith. You know what? I'll do leap of faith real quick. During the Make It Rain event... Wow, there's a lot of people here. Yeah, it's very popular for one reason. MGP gains give an extra 50% boost. Meaning that if you earn 1,000 MGP from an event, you instead earn 1,500. And this also applies to challenges? Where are the challenges? It also should apply to these challenges. They also get the 50% boost. So there is a lot of good reason to play a lot of MGP stuff. But there's also a quest. But I'm going to do the quest after this because I would like some MGP at the start. And the quest item we're going to get is... weird. Let's take a look at everybody's fashion here. If we can see all the fashion. This person is running around in just their underwear. Yeah, that... okay. That is a peculiar look. <laughs> we'll be getting that. We have an Aether Pool gun. Very nice. Oh, yeah. And speaking of events... The hunt for the second Genesis is also on. Where we got weekly objectives, which I've already completed. Uh, we have Minimog challenges, which I've already completed. We have the ultimate challenge of getting to level 100 in Pals of the Dead, which I have already completed. Not to mention that the Yokai event is still going on. And next week, the Fall Guys event is returning. There's like five events going on at once next week. So if you have any trepidations of, eh, maybe I'll just put it off, don't. Don't do that. Get on this now, just to get it out of the way. Because, trust me, it is wild. And, okay, reserving a sir, here we go. So, yeah, let's do one quick uh, leap of faith at 6 o'clock, which should be, ah, uh, yes, the floating islands in Nim, I believe they're called. Yeah, don't look down, even though that's exactly what I'm doing. All right, I'm just going to do that so I can see where my character is. And you'll notice that it says Traveler next to me rather than the normal uh, free company tag. That is because I am visiting Primal for the moment. Because it also has to do with the events, uh, the Moogle Tome event. So one of the things of the Moogle Tome is that they have some sort of PvP mode that is Mog Tome grind worthy. Right? And you can also do that to get your PvP rewards grind in as well. It's kind of like a multi-grind or whatever. The mode is Rival Wings. I played it before on my stream, and it is essentially the Final Fantasy XIV version of Dota. Except nowhere near as good. Way too snowball-y. Come on. Let's get up here. Let's get up to here. There we go. Up here. Oh boy. Yeah, there's a lot of. I'm missing my jumps just because there's so many people in my way. Uh. Come on up. Come on up. Alright, whoa. Easy. Easy. Come on, pro gamer. Move. Uh. Come on. Let me just zoom in then, just a little bit try and figure out where I am. Yeah, a lot of people are struggling on these jumps. This jump here that is so problematic. Alright, then I need to get the silver. Jump way over here! There we go. Get this. Come on. Jump to here. Jump over to here. Good. Let's just be cautious. And now we just need to get the gold. And it's gonna be off to the right here. A smart person would jump and hit the checkpoint for leaving, but nah, I'm gutsy. Alright. Over here. Over 
here. Easy. Easy. Hop. Hop. All right, there we go. And normally we would receive, I think, like 4,000 monies. We received 6,000. And we also get four regular tombstones, which is very nice. Because I think that makes it 100? Because I've been doing a lot of grinding in Rival Wings. How much grinding? Well, if I go to my PvP profile, go to Rival Wings, I'm currently at 76 total victories for that. And if I go to my achievement list, I have two on my watch list, which is Emerge Victorious in a Hidden Gorge campaign 100 times, which is technically Rival Wings. There's one map. There's only one map. And we have the Magitek Avenger A1 Identification Key. But there's also another mount that requires 100 wins in Rival Wings. It's it's the same thing. I only need to keep track of one. Oh, and also we have this. 266 out of 312 for the Jack of All Cards and the Jelly Toast mount. See past it's Ulda? Yes. Head this way. We need to go from here to the lift attendant. All the way to the Ruby Road Exchange. Or actually, down to the Ruby Road Exchange. I, I keep forgetting that technically you go up to the airport around here. At least I think so. If we, Yeah, it, it has to be up. It's not like you go down for the airport. That makes no sense. But yeah, here we are. And this is the area that will tell you all this wonderful stuff. Uh, let's talk with the silver nettle here. Oi, Venture, why not spend some of that hard-earned coin here at the markets? Go and treat yourself. You deserve it. That's not the person who has information. Well-informed adventurer. Here we go. Hey, little dude. Do you love MGP? Then you best get yourself over to the Gold Saucer and make the most of the 50% bonus rewards on offer during this season's limited-time event. Did I mention it's only for a limited time? I think it's like three weeks. And the Fall Guys event coming back next week? That is one of the best MGP grinds. And if it also takes that 50% bonus, you are looking at some... Lalafell Bards! I know this group. Well, not personally, I just have seen them before. Alright, but we're really here for one thing and one thing only. Exchanging your regular moon, uh, tombstones. Here we go. Ooh, goody, I could buy the Emerald Carbuncle Earrings if I wanted to. Let's try these suckers on. Uh, it's literally just the one earring, which, you know, maybe for a summoner glam. And also, this is very important, this is exclusive to the event that is this. You're going to want to grab it now. <laughs> so, there we go. Carbuncle Earring is a go. I can just keep that there in my inventory, not a big deal. But, of course, the real big deal is Quivain. And if we're going to the gold saucer, let me just swap it to something a little more appropriate. Not quite what I wanted to. No, 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 no. I don't want to change it into recommended gear. Here we go. This is my gold saucer look. Real nice. Okay. Quivain is convinced that the truth is out there. The quest is available for a limited time only. Of impish importance. And we're going to get... Uh... Furry suit? Eh, whatever. It's free. That eclectic attire. That distinct scent of the unknown. You, my good stranger, must be an adventurer. You have found yourself in the company of Quivain, journalist for the Thavnerian Truth. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Are you aware of the festivities currently underway at the Gold Saucer? The ga they guarantee a generous MGP bonus to those who participate. But I have reason to believe that there is more to this celebration than meets the eye. Be -ba -be -ba -be. As a writer for the premier publication on unexplained and otherworldly phenomena, I was drawn not to the promise of copious cackpots, but to the rumors of enigmatic water imps that have suddenly proliferated amongst the saucer's patrons. Really? We at the Thavnerian Truth have been looking to expand our investigations across the star, and this supernatural per scoop presents us with the ideal opportunity. Why have the imps made themselves known now? What do they intend to accomplish? I must cover this groundbreaking story with all due haste, but I cannot hope to answer all these questions alone. Tell me, adventurer, would you aid me in my pursuit of the truth? Nod. Excellent, excellent. Then let us reconvene at the Gold Saucer's entrance square. All right, sure, well, uh, we'll head there. Hmm. 
Yeah, today's stream might be a little on the short side because Splatfest starts tonight, and I need to record some stuff for that. <laughs> Namely, when the event actually starts in like two hours. Airship landing, let's go. Oh, they're going to be playing... <laughs> uh, the band has announced what they're going to be playing next, which... All right. Technically, it's a cover, so I won't get knocked for DMCA, but uh, I recognize that song, and yeah. We need to go to the Gold Saucer. Here we are again. You can tell it's a special event because they brought out the cactpots. The cactuses. All right. The cactuars. Yeah, cactuar is apparently how it's pronounced. Not cactar, but whatever. All right, yeah, there's a lot of people who have done this quest, and they're currently doing the quest with aim. Ah, you've arrived. Notice anything out of the ordinary? Uh, looking around, not really. Wait, hang on a second. That's a little sus, isn't it? Oh, we've been spotted. Hi. Squee. <laughs> uh, hi. What did it just say to me? Or I think our creature is in costume. <laughs> Yeah, indeed, an imitation and nothing more. And here I thought I could rival the editor-in-chief with my own unprecedented article. Now what am I to report? This is but child's play next to the extraterrestrial discoveries he has made. We have found the source of the rumors, but saucer imps unmasked just normal men and women in costume? Why, that sounds more like to me like a waste of good ink. It's unacceptable, worthless, unfit for consumption. I am willing to bet because I finished off the Hildebrand and Walker quests that I'm getting special dialogue from all this. Gods, I grow drowsy just thinking about writing such a thing. Our readership would be appalled. Fortunately, there is another curious lead I wish to pursue. That I wish to pursue. In doing so, we may frame our story around the current festivities, then recount the role of the imps within them. Yes, that might suffice. Why are you looking directly at me? You see, as I awaited your arrival, I questioned the attendant at the front desk as to the imps' origin. Strangely enough, I was told that only a select few staff members were present in the planning stages of this affair, and fewer still know who proposed the initial idea. I was, however, informed that a staff member on the floor, a man attending to an imp, may have the information we seek. If we split up and search the saucer, we're bound to find him. I shall leave Wonder Square to you. Let us reconvene here when our rounds are complete. Search for the Abbot Attendant in Wonder Square. All right, where are you? Uh, Wonder Square... Ah, this direction. Somewhere around here is a strange person. Gee, I wonder, is it this guy? That is a very... very uncomfortable-looking suit. All right. Well met, my good man. My companion and I are delighted to make your acquaintance. He cannot speak like you and I, but I assure you, he is oh so fond of making new friends on this joyous, impish occasion. What is the occasion, you ask? Why, the March of Imps, of course. Tis a fresh new take on our annual celebration here at the Gold Saucer, as suggested by one of our staff. When we first received word of it, we were rather baffled by the concept, but it seems to have left a positive impression on our guests. To present our patrons with the most engaging experience possible, we've outfitted our attendants with impish attire. These costumed imps are free to frolic about the saucer and bring joy to those they meet with an adorable squee or a cap-a-pop. 
Why imps, one might ask? And they would have good reason to do so. Alas, I myself was never told the exact reasoning. But if you're keen to learn more of the march, I know just the imp who can assist you. He's the one who coined the idea for it, after all. I last saw him on the second floor at the Manderville Lounge. He may still be there, if you hurry. If he should speak to you in the impish tongue, you needn't fret. He's particularly unique, even among his brethren, and he makes his intentions quite clear to those not versed in imp speak. Alright, let's head upstairs. Uh, stairs? Nah. I'd rather go by. Whee! Uh... Godbird, is that you? Hi. Squee. Kappa, kappa, ba, ba. Hi. Yes. Though you feel as if there's been some grave misunderstanding, the imposing imp suddenly entrusts you with a set of impish attire. His piercing gaze reaches into the very depths of your soul, and you somehow come to understand what he is trying to tell you. Go forth, my stalwart apprentice. You have the sinking feeling that the imp will, you will not provide you with the information you require until you have completed his task. It is now your solemn duty to don the impish attire and entertain the patrons in Event Square. You must continue wearing the costume in order to progress. Speak with the imposing imp to restore or prolong the garment change. Okay then! This is weird. Whee! Look at my new relics. All right, looks like I need to head very far. Somewhere around here. I'm guessing I just need to find, ah, here we go. The pitiable patron. Hello, kind sir. Judging by the eccentric attire, I'm going to assume you work here. Tell me, which of these attractants aren't stacked against me? I've lost nearly all my MGP today, and I need to find a way to earn it back somehow. Uh, Kappa! Squee! Allow me to assist you. Okay. I don't think I'm supposed to say anything other than Kappa or Squee. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get in trouble if I select this one. So I'm going to play along and say Kappa. Is that your way of consoling me? Hmm, as if I needed pity from an oversized frog. Still, I appreciate the sentiment. Luck may not be on my side, but it's nice to know that someone else is. And he disappears. All right. Well, that was the thing that happened. I need to head over to, ah, this direction. Looks like I'm headed over towards the cat pot with the mascot loving maiden. Oh boy, don't give me hope. Hi. Uh oh, hello there. You must be that new mascot that's been marching about. Some manner of imp, was it? I like your hat, er, head thing. Ka -pa -pa! Squee! Or blip bloop affirmative. I am the pinnacle of imp technology. Uh, I'll just go with squee? How precious! I was a bit afraid to chat with you at first, but you're much friendlier than I imagined. First sen Senor Seba tender, now you! Ah, uh, would it that I never had to leave the saucer. I could spend the rest of my day surrounded by adorable creatures like you. Alright. There's another person around here somewhere. Uh, it is probably below me. Ah, oh, there we go. The demanding daughter. Didn't mean to hit that button. Wow, you're one of those new mascots. You must know all about the prizes here, right? I've saved up lots of MGP, but I'm not sure what to exchange it for. Squee or Kappa, or why not exchange it for the water imp? Let's go with Kappa. Hee <laughs> hee, aren't you cute? If only I could take you home with me. Oh, I know, they have little imps that look just like you at the prize counter. Daddy, I want a water imp. Let's go get one, please. Pretty please. And she just phased right through me. Okay. Your impish antics have brought joy to the saucer's patrons. Return to the imposing imp and inform him of your success. Alright, uh, looks like I need to go up here. And whoop. Goodness, I love the teleport. All right. 
Wow, that Cackpot Tower is pretty tall. Oh, I can't do that while wearing the guys. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just run there. This way. Oh, someone has the Necromancer title? Wow. That. For those who don't know how to get the Necromancer title, uh, the Palace of the Dead, it goes all the way to level 200. You have to go from level 1 to level 200 in a single life solo for the Necromancer title. It is ridiculous. Yeah, I did the thing. Kapapa. The imposing imp appears downcast as if you were expecting someone else. Perhaps it would be best to remove your impish attire. Quick, let me undress in front of you. So yeah, are uh, we kosher right now? Kappa. And there he goes. Am I supposed to notice that character? In the ephemeral moments that the imposing imp's gaze meets yours, you were overcome with a mysterious sense of obligation and realize what he is trying to tell you. Let us continue our discussion at Entrance Square. Okay. That's going to be the end of the quest coming up real short, real quick. Ah, there you are. Loathed as I am to admit it, my search for the one behind this event has yielded little success. Regardless of my results, it's plain to see that the imps are well loved by all, but I cannot write an article on that fact alone. How did you fare, my honorary assistant? Uh, so I found this dude who was like nearly naked. He only had a you know, his skivvies on and uh, and the uh, hat. Oh, hi, Godbert. Oh, tis a pleasure as always to see you at the saucer shake. The Godbert Manderville? Never did I think I'd meet a member of the syndicate face to face. Surely you of all people must know who proposed the idea for this event. generous deeds this day have not gone unnoticed, so I believe an explanation is in order. It was I who proposed the idea for these festivities, as a matter of fact. Uh, so that was you? Perhaps you are already aware, but we employed a void scent note as Typhon here at the Gold Saucer. Summoned into this world by the Thaumaturge's guild, he is a diligent soul who utilizes his formidable fungos to our patrons' benefit. Yeah, it keeps knocking me about, it's really annoying. It was not long after I hired Master Typhon that I became acquainted with a high-ranking member of the guild. Through him, I learned of a curious spell from ages past, known only as Imp. True to its name, the spell transforms the target into a very beings you have espied marching about the saucer. Master Ultros is proficient in the very same spell, may have you fell victim to it during your encounter atop the dragon's neck. He often refers to imps as his buddies and pals, in fact. That is a reference to the trial where you do get turned into an imp. And it's super annoying because no one remembers the mechanic about that. I found myself quite enamored with these adorable creatures and sought to answer the questions that let, yet lingered in my mind. Where do the imps come from? And how did their spell fall into the hands of man? Oh boy. I poured through what few resources were available on the subject, yet I could not find a definitive answer. Heartbreaking though it was, I was left with no choice but to leave the creature's lineage shrouded in mystery. Nevertheless, I could not allow their history to fade into obscurity. When it came time to decide the theme of our annual festivities, I crafted the impish attire based on my findings and proposed a celebration in their honor. You utilize these costumes not only to entertain, but to educate others as well. And with that, the full story is laid bare. Mm -hmm. Indeed, though I know not if such a conclusion would prove ideal for the Thapnarian truth. Oh boy. I feel a story coming on. Myth made manifest at the Golden Saucer. Thaumaturgical history reveals Imps' mystery. 
Ha <laughs> ha yes, this is the scoop I seek. Ah, uh, boy. It is as Master Mandeville says, much about these imps remains an enigma, but they have brought countless smiles to the gold saucer. Readers shall doubtless want to learn of the, uh, their existence, as well as the event that brought these few facts to the fore. Such passion and drive to shed light upon the unknown is a fascinating tale, one that I shall do my utmost to depict. Ho 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 ho! That's the spirit, lad. Twould be an honor to see our imps grace your publications pages. I shall look forward to reading your account of it in the coming days. This young man's story will doubtless bring all the more attention to the March of the Imps, so I must express my thanks in the spirit of celebration, with a set of impish attire, of course. You don't really have to do that, Godbert. No, no, okay, I don't have a choice. I mean, you can't really say no to Godbert, can you? You have my deepest gratitudes as well, adventurer. Inspiration calls, and I must away to make these ideas a reality. But your contributions were vital to this discovery. You are more than deserving of reward. And away he goes. A job well done, my friend. The festivities shall be underway for some time yet, so I hope you will not squander the opportunity to enjoy this moment of respite and march with our fellow imps. Eh, why not? Not entirely sure we needed to focus on that, but whatever. Bum, ba -dum, bum. We get mission impossible. It's it's a little too obvious of a pun. All right, I am going to head back to Old Da real quick. Stop by the inn. All right, uh, seek passage to Old Da because I can do that for free. Stop by the inn to drop off both the earrings and this costume set. Uh, I'm also looking. I only have four of these Genesis tombstones now, and there's oh boy, there is a whole lot that I'm gonna have to do in the next coming weeks because Dawn Trail's just you know, slowly but surely marching on. I have 50 of these Gold Saucer VIP cards. They give me a 15% bonus over two hours, and I believe that also stacks with the event that's currently going on right now. So you get it's not 50 times another 15% on top. No, it's 65% uh, extra. And with the Fall Guys event coming up soon, oh man, that is going to be so much MGP. It is unreal how much MGP that's going to be. Alright. Armor, head body. I right, put the imp suit and the imp head away, and I need neck, ears. Oh. Oh. Oh, I have to use a gl Really? Really? Remove all of them? I don't need to remove all of them, but whatever. I can only add this via... Projectable, desynthesizable, shop selling price, none. Yeah, I'm just going to store that anyways. Neat. I'm gonna rotate here. Oh, I don't need that. Uh, search for item. Yeah, hang on. Let me just take care of that real quick. Earrings right here. Uh, this is the Amaterine. Oh, there they are. Yeah, let's just desynth that real quick, because I, I need to level up my desynth so bad. Yeah, if you haven't noticed what my desynth looks like, Culinarian is very near max, because fish. But then there's Goldsmith that's up there. Yeah, Alchemist. Trying to get Alchemist desynth up is a real pain in the butt. You only have Grimoires. You have to desynth books. That's all you get. But yeah, that was the quest for this event, which was really short. Thankfully, I'll I'll run this on my lava alt some other time. But I do want to go back to the gold saucer because I believe if we run around, we may spot a couple Easter eggs. All right, right. Not to the husting strip. No, I need to go all the way up to the airport landing. Oh, by the way, I, I don't think I've mentioned on stream. Uh... Or maybe I have. Last time I streamed this, it was... Something involving... Oh, yeah, it was all my Lollafall elves. So, yeah, I don't think people have met my, uh... Wall's canonical cat here. 
Nope. 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 Stop. Stop all motion, you. This is Hatsu. Yep. Named after the... Uh, can we... Stop. Thank you. Yep. So this is my walls, or Warrior of Lights, canonical cat named Hatsu, which is the name for the green dragon. So made up a little lore about him, and this, it's the Tora Jiro minion that you get from Stormblood uh, Hunts. The uh, currency for that, which I believe is Centurio Seals, it's like 800 for this little dude. Soon as I saw him, I'm like, oh my goodness, absolutely adorable. Look at the big eyes. It's like this cute little creamsicle orange kitty. I'm not sure if it's like creamsicle or if it's just orange cat. It's definitely got orange cat energy to him. But all right. Let's head back to the gold saucer. Run around for a bit, see if we can spot some people that we might recognize, but they are in costume. So there's no guarantee that they're going to show up. I have done most everything I can on uh, Ullumber here. So if I was to run around here as small Ullumber, you probably wouldn't see any of the Easter eggs because he's barely done anything. Oh, wait, tournament ranking board. Oh, goodness. Okay, see, I'm thinking. Why don't I head up first? I lifted the Chocobo Square. Yes. Let's take a quick look around here. And, oh, right. You know that there's an event going on solely because if I were to hop over to here, let's take a look at the turn tournament ranking board. That is a lot of people. 46 people have participated in this tournament. And I have a strategy that nets me 300 points every single time against Master AI. So, congratulations to Happy Lees. You did your thing. Yeah, because getting that high in Verminion tournament nets you something like 117,000, but with the added bonus of 50%, you're getting close to 200,000 MGP, which is a lot. Yeah, right now I'm currently sitting on how much MGP? I, I, I don't have much. Yeah, 142,000. Which isn't really a whole lot. I can run around here and do chocobo racing or the stuff, but at this point, I already have all the stuff that I really want to buy MGP for. And I'm not seeing anybody here that is worth really talking to. All right. Let's go. Was that the entrance? Yeah, it's the entrance. Okay. I know there's one that I want to try and find out here. We have the campaign attendant. Oh, yes. The campaign attendant. Seasonal event prizes. We have things here are on the cheap. So these normally cost, uh, like the Gambler's Trench Coat, I think it's like 100000 Now it's down to 70000 Gambler's Gloves. So if I want to get some of this on my Lollafell alt, which I might actually do, this is the guy you want to talk to to get all that. We also have the Senorita Saber Tender, which was available the very first time this came around. Gold Saucer Attendant, Rolling Card, GG Card, Grounded. Yeah, a bunch of stuff over here. We have 200000 for these, but they normally go for 300000 Seasonal event prizes two. This is weapons. Just the weapons. All right. Neat. So yeah, he's here. Once you complete that quest, he's there for like some cheap stuff. Let's keep running around. Hopefully I can find where one of these people are. There's a summoning bell I can't use because I'm visiting Primal currently. Maybe around here. Yeah, there's a lot of people here. Goodness. Oh, hello. A violet imp. I wonder who this could be with the Aura tail and the ninja daggers. Jake, glad am I to find a familiar face among these halls. I am come on behalf of Lord Kien to investigate the creatures you know as water imps. In the far east, we call them Kappa, and they oft appear in our myths. In our myths. My lord was unusually intrigued by reports of the imps' appearance and would not rest until he learned more of this phenomenon. Yet his position allows him little time for such trivial matters, and thus did I travel here in his stead. Know you of the muscular imp that roams the saucer? T'was no sooner after I arrived that he bestowed upon me this suit of attire. Perhaps I shall wear it again upon my return to Doma. My lord was eager to see these living, living legends up close. 
Yep, that's Yugri. He looks quite nice in that suit, I guess. All right. That's the one I know that exists around here. We have people sitting around here. Problem is, I don't know. Well, hang on. Kapapa! You are just there. Okay. Nothing indicating they, they are a particularly special version of a thing. The huggers that are here. Hold up. Hold up. Who's this? Dreaming Imp. Who has a cat tail. Hi. Ah, I wonder who this is. Such intriguing creatures, these water imps. If I am ever fortunate enough to dream of them, I would invite them to our hatching tide festivities without delay. Perhaps one day they might even decipher our language and speak with us more candidly. I once welcomed a curious talking rabbit to our celebrations, and I would welcome talking imps with equal enthusiasm. Okay. So this person is one of the Aliapos. I don't remember which one. It's uh, the hatching tide vendor for that one. Another way around it. Wait, I I don't think you're anyone special, but I'm to the untrained eye it might appear I am merely hiding here in a frivolous attempt to avoid the many duties that I, a gold saucer attendant, have been assigned. So before you go getting in your head that I am somehow doing a disservice to this fine establishment, I ask that you probably move along and only return when that eye of yours has received the proper training. <laughs> Worker solidarity girl, I totally get it. Oh goodness, the moogles pause. Those things are so loud as furniture. We got those three doing their thing. I... Okay, that's a player. <laughs> Skatekeeper over there. Uh, well, hang on! There's... There's another one over here. We have... Kapapa! Okay, nothing too unusual. Oh yeah, this girl. No pets allowed, my arse! Right, let's head upstairs and take a quick look around to see if there are any mysteriously out of place imps. Like, this is the largest area. People carrying boxes. People running around as kappas, so we know those aren't them. We have a couple of people here. Nothing too crazy. Uh, sometimes a special NPC spawn here, but I guess not to, that's not the button. Still not the button. Where is my warpy? Oh, that would explain why. It's on cool now. Don't see anything out this way. All right. So I was just at the round square. And there wasn't anybody at the round square. I'm going to head over to the wonder square. Wonder square east. We go. Yeah, we got some Mahjong over here. Probably have a number of Mahjong uh, players over here. Oh yeah, speaking of Mahjong, this is important to, for me at least, I am attending a convention this coming July, and I am going to be hosting a panel on Ricci Mahjong rules. It is going to be incredibly interesting, and probably impossible for me to truncate all the rules of Ricci Mahjong to less than an hour. So, alright, that's just a regular player. What have we got over here? Aren't you like someone special? No, I think they're just... In oh, rumor is it's anatom anatomically correct. That's quite the statue. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, let's see down here if there is anyone. There's Shinana. We have... Kapapa! What the heck? Imps, my buddies, my pals. Ultros, what are you doing out here? You are way smaller than you are in the trial. No one over here in the crystal uh, towers. I don't think Shanana here is anything. My companion promised me to meet in Wonder Square, but I can't find him anywhere. Do you think it's my dress? He's so particular when it comes to fashion. Oh, yeah, this Lollafell. There's another Lollafell that talks about her, but he's in the other Wonder Square. <laughs> so I was like, where is that woman? Another senior sap attender who is just walking around and dancing. Not a big deal. We have nothing over there. We have Mass Rose and Kasumi because that's happening this weekend. I don't know what all the. Uh, just look up online what you need to wear. That's basically it. Yeah, I think that is going to be it for this area. 
So time to warp over to the Wolf's Den Pier. Because it's time to switch gears entirely from MGP grinding to battle. I need to swap from this gear to, uh, actually what I need to do, swap back into my, oh, where is it? 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 I'm addicted to glamor, okay? Come on. Seriously, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I got rid of it. Right. Um, hang on a second. I can fix that. Uh, I can't fix that here. Okay, fine. Plan B. I just ignore it. Let me get my guns out for Machinist. I said let me get my guns out for Machinist. All right. Time to go into the Hidden Gorge map. N yep, this is for Rival Wings. The other map is Astrologos. Due to revisions being made to the PvP system, this duty is temporarily unavailable. Further announcements will be made in upcoming patch notes or similar. It has been years, literal years, since this map was available to play. I don't think it's ever coming back. More importantly, we have this. I mean, I could do some front lines if I really wanted to, but I don't want to. <laughs> We're going to join in here. And I like running as Machinist, personally. Because even though there are definitely some better uh, better jobs here and there, Machinist, if you start snowballing, you could just start just eliminating people left and right. It is a lot of fun. Having said that, if your team is falling behind, you are kind of screwed. Combination crystals, I don't have those. Wolf collar exchange, I don't really have any of those. So, trophy crystals. Take a look at the universal gear. Oh yeah, this is all the uh, hoods and stuff. It's interesting how they have A1 and A2 models that die slightly differently. But coming in Dawn Trail, they're going to be swapping things around. Namely, they're going to have die channels, two die channels, for most of the gear. Not all of it, just most of it. Uh, what am I looking at? What am I looking for? What am I looking for? Ah, yes, Ventures. I'm going to need all the Ventures. More Ventures. There we go, 2,792. Perfect. I don't need more Glamour Prisms. 293 is plenty of that. And I have over 2,000 ventures, which is also more than plenty. Yeah, water ventures, they are used for retainers. And since I'm visiting Primal, they're not going to be any good for me here. Once I go back to my home world, then I will be able to spend all that stuff on other characters. Oh, yeah, and there's also the disreputable priest who sells the Makai gear. I already have all the Makai mounts, so I don't care for the Makai titles that I could be getting. I, I honestly don't. I don't need to collect all of them. I, I just get the ones I want because this game is way too flippin' huge. Ooh, there's a duel going on. Oh, let's see what we got. Oh. Oh, dear. This person is... It looks like a Dragoon. Other person is... Oh, no. Oh, really? Catalyze. I think that's Scholar. Yeah, th they have Scholar. That's the, uh... That's the fairy. Fine, I'll get in here. I'm not going to, uh... <laughs> not getting into a duel. I do not feel comfortable getting into a duel. This area is just 1v1 PvP, and I don't think there's any titles. There's no MGP for it. This is just you fighting one other person for the heck of it. Oh, and look at this. So that's what it looks like on a Lollafell. Tiny little limp. Man, these two are just... Oof. <laughs> So Scholar's really good at dealing lots of damage, but not really good at actually landing eliminations. Dragoon, I think, is going to have a slightly better time here. I can't even see what's going on in there. I don't want to cross that line because they may actually someone may challenge me. Uh oh! Uh. All right, winning the duel. Congratulations. <laughs> it's okay if you die here. You just get rezzed. Not a big deal. 
someone's practicing on the striking dummies down here. It's taking quite a bit of time to actually get... Hold up. Someone has the Heidelin Idol. That's one of the books, I believe. You know, one of the IRL books you can buy. It's like an art book or something. Yeah, if I need to practice something against a dummy, I go up the ship and I go up here. Because usually there's not a lot of people up here, but there's two this time around. Which is fine and fair. So, this uh, PvP mode is very different from an actual usual mode. I think I've played Rival Wings before on the channel. I don't know if I've ever uploaded the VOD to my VOD channel. So you notice how my hotbar only has seven major abilities and a couple of others. I'll go over them real quick while the Q is still doing its Q thing. My first ability is known as Blast Charge. It delivers a ranged attack with a potency of 4,000, which is a very large number. But I also have 5,200... Uh, 52,000... 500 health, which is, in this mode, quite a bit. This gives me a shot, and every time I get an attack, I get firearms generating heat. It's overheated when five stacks occur. And when five stacks occur, I now have act able to activate heat blast. I have, like, three shots that I can activate in quick succession. That's pretty much all of it. Yeah, it also increases movement speed by 25%. Blast Charge is my second ability. It's a big AoE in front of me. It deals a little bit of knockback by 10 Yalms, which is enough to knock someone off a ledge. And it has a recast time of 20 seconds, so I can only use it every so often. This particular ability I will cover later. Let's go Wildfire. This is covers target in a slow burning pitch, and its potency is increased by 4,000 for each of your attack actions. Landing three attacks before it goes off delivers a much bigger boom. We have the Bishop Auto Turret. This delivers an AoE effect that pulses every so often. Uh, to me, it creates a barrier that absorbs damage equal to a heal of 6,000 potency, and it just refreshes every time I'm underneath it. Meanwhile, the Striking Dummy is going to take increased damage by about 10%. So if I manage to land a shot on this, they're going to take quite a little extra bit of damage. Now for the big ability. We'll see it in action. I'll explain in action. This ability here is really 4 and 1, but they cycle. So if I go to actions and traits, uh, this is not the place I want to actually take a look. Uh, the PvP profile. Job actions. It swaps from Drill, which is a big damage, to Bio Blaster, which is an AOA slowing down, to Air Anchor, which stuns a person, and Chainsaw, which deals damage based on how much health they have remaining. Lower health, more damage. And I have an ability known as... Ah, yes. Analysis. That boosts what those things do. Because technically, Air Anchor uh, binds rather than stuns, but if I use that and then that, it stuns them, which is pretty much every single time I should use that. And then we have my ultimate, which is Marksman Spike. It has a range attack with a potency of 36,000, can only be executed when there's a limit break. It has a range of 50 Yalms, which is pretty much halfway across this map. So there's a lot of stuff on screen right now. It is kind of difficult to explain. But let's take a look at the map over here. We have our base. We're on the Team Falcon. We're against Team Raven. This is the core. We need to destroy that before they destroy ours within the 10 minutes. We have a little bit of time to catch up. Right now, there's a mid uh, that is going to spawn one of three things. One of those things I don't care about. The other two, I do. And we have teams that are all in the alliance. There's uh, six alliances per side. You have four potatoes on each team. It's a 24 to 24 person vote. It's a lot. So the Cerulean Tank, uh, Cerulean and Soaring effects are increased for all team members. Soaring effect is a thing in this game where it stacks up to 20, you never lose them, and... Oh boy. Come on, work, thank you. Let's see if I can't get something. So right now I'm at zero Soaring. Get out of here. There he goes. Bought myself a little extra time. All right. Uh, we got a couple soaring on Alliance's D and F, which is just fine. That's not the right button. Come on, game, please. Oh, dear. Nope, nope, don't want to get, do not want to be down there. 
All right, I get one soaring. For every one of these soarings, I get a slight damage boost to all of my abilities, which is pretty wild. There we go. Soaring two. It stacks all the way up to 20. And once you're at 20, you also get a 25% bonus to how fast your limit break upgrades. So yeah, uh, if I start snowballing, it's crazy. All right, uh, we have four people here. Five, technically. So now my limit break is up. If I, it's, yeah. This mode goes pretty wild. If you, ow, get slightly within the lead. Oh, not good, not good. All right, heal, heal. All right. So yeah, there's a fight over this. And now the real draw. You see this way on the distance? We need to kill that thing. And how do we do that? I'm going to actually uh, warp back. Oh, yeah. We're out of this party stack of five now. It's not just me that gets it. Any one of my, any one of my team either very much helps with an assistance or actually nails a kill. They will add to the entire party. So right now, I'm at five. We got six, seven, seven, five, and seven. And now this is dangerous. So there are three bots that are in this game. I like using this one the most. Oh, dear. I um, don't like that. All right. This is the Cruise Chaser. And yes, that is the music from the Heavensward Raid. It is amazingly good. So this particular bot, there's one of three. We have Spin Crusher, which you only use on Machina. We have these other two abilities, like this big slice move. That will deal damage to players like crazy. Uh, you really can't damage mammoths with these. Leave the mammoths to your team. Oh, that summoner got deleted. Yep, we're up to seven stacked. So my job is to make sure that... Uh oh where is where could be south all right okay, you guys should set up perfect right there right there all right so this idiot is doing something you should not be doing that is an oppressor its big ability is a gigantic bomb that deals a ton of damage to buildings and nothing else. It has a, it does have one ability where it can like push anyone who's close away. However, having said that, it does like no damage. And oh, you dead. Just destroyed. Yeah, we're already at 12 stack. I'm gonna do that because I can do that. Yeah, that is known as a depressor. Don't do that. Oh, dear. Oop. Dead. They are just feeding my team so hardcore right now. All right, this is gonna be bluff. Or rough, not bluff. Oh, that was a good one. All right, tank spin. All right, that's not good. So, oh wait, that is good. I'm on Team Falcons. What am I thinking? All right, I am. Ooh, that is so much damage. They are just feeding me constantly. All right, thing is, I am very low on health, and I may die soon. I'm gonna do this. You cannot heal while inside of a mech, which is kind of a big, kind of important. Yeah, my team right now has 18 soaring high. That is a lot this early in the game. I'm also taking a look at these. Uh, so it's like Dota, there are two lanes of towers. If you manage to take down one, uh, one tower, the main base is open. 
take down both towers, but it's very open and takes extra damage. Having said that, every time you take down one of those, which is probably going to happen to their south tower, they get to spawn in the last of the three. Okay, we're already at 20 sack. Yeah, we are going to be destroying. Come closer, come closer. <laughs> so much death. I'm real curious, like, how many eliminations I'm going to get from this. Oh, that is a lot of death. So, yeah, uh, that's the big boy. That is the Brute Justice. It is very good at killing. That's really what is good. Killing towers. So, its big thing right now is punching. It could also do a laser beam like that. Which is a surprisingly large amount of damage. And it also has a flamethrower ability, which is damage against floor troops. So lasers against Machina, punches against basically everybody. And now I'm in trouble. Oh, I'm in trouble right now. However, uh, we're at their south base killing their dudes. Yeah, hang on. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna head back to load up on the, uh... So over here in the corner, you can see how much CE my team has. It is currently at 83. Uh, if you're at more than 50, you can summon a tower. And we have both of ours, so I'm just gonna go Cruise Chaser. Trust me, Cruise Chaser is the one you almost always want. And this indicates that my team's in the lead. So that is the main core bar. It's at 87. Ours is at 100, because we have both of our towers still. Yeah, go ahead and group up, I dare ya. I'm not sure what that warrior thought, but that warrior is already at the 13. So if the game goes late, everybody gets uh, basically a ridiculously large amount of everything. I'm gonna just keep doing this. Yeah, it's a big laser beam. Oh goodness, there are, oh, that's a lot of them. By the way, did I mention they have cannons? They have cannons. Yeah, I wasn't gonna live through that. So we're at 89, which is really good. I'm very curious how many eliminated. Like, Gabi Juice is coming in mid, which is like utterly lame. All right. LBs mid if in good position to get, which we don't even need the LBs to. Look at their numbers. We just need to rush them. We just need to rush them. Yeah, we already have uh, four teams up at maximum of 20. I'm not sure what their team has. It ain't that much. This is one of the downsides of this mode. In my opinion, it is way too snowballing. As soon as you win that mid, it takes a lot to just come back at all oh wait that was that that wasn't a mech that was a uh, uh oh I'm gonna do that you may want to move buddy That's fine. We've still got enough. We got four minutes to end this. So oppressors. I don't like running as oppressors. It is the way you win this game, technically, because oppressors do a ton of damage. Like, you'll see this number just went from 18 to 6. That's because of our uh, one of our oppressors here. If they launch it one more time, we win this. I don't like using them because they are very slow. 
And if anyone surrounds you, you're basically dead. And most people grab an oppressor first. I wouldn't do that. I would rather get a goose chaser first. All right, let's see how many eliminations I did. I got a ton. I got 12 eliminations. Wow, that is so many. Uh, the only person, oh, 16 for Sarah here. Wow, that, yeah, that, that's, that's impressive. All right, sure, take that. All right, I'm going to queue up again real quick. Join, because every day for the uh, current Mogtome event, there's a group known as PvP Revival that have chosen Primal to be the server popping off every night EDT. And tomorrow, uh, they also rotate through Aether, Crystal, and Dynamis on NA uh, over the weekend. So I believe tomorrow is Crystal and then Dynamis is Sunday. So that way, if you don't want a uh, data center travel, you can just stick around here. But I personally just go to Primal because it's always going to be popping. That is my 77th win in this mode. I need 100, which is hopefully going to happen by next week. I cannot guarantee it because this is the time when several games that I play through are going through events. Destiny 2 is having its big Brave Arsenal thing. Splatoon 3 is going to be having a big thing happening. You know, the uh, Splatfest coming up. Oh, and the Sizzle Season trailer? Yeah. Yeah. Big, big run. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, we got a slightly different team matchup. Yep. Violence, extreme violence. It's Rival Wings again, baby. Yeah. Some people really love this mode. I enjoyed it at first. Not gonna lie. Uh, PvP profile. Rival Wings. Yeah, I'm at 77 wins. I'm slightly less than half and half on winning this because first couple of matches you're like I have no idea what's going on and you're kind of the reason everyone loses but um so then we have crystal in conflict it only tells me my victories I'm only one three and ranked mode in this uh game it's the first two weeks of a season it's up otherwise no one cares so right now we have gobby juice limit gauge and soaring effects are increased for all team members it literally does not help you at all. It is the one thing that if it spawns in mid, you just ignore. Tanks are good, but you can still kind of win without it. The one thing you want to get, though, it's the Gobby Tank. If that shows up, you need to try your darndest to actually get it to happen. Because otherwise, you're basically uh, going to lose the game. It is ridiculous. All right, so one thing I should mention here, this big red ring, the enemies have a buff. Tower defense, uh, having damage taken and also the, I think it's like an HP recharge. So if you're fighting them under their tower, they have an advantage. But also, if you really gang up on them, it's not gonna matter that much like we just did. So I can attack this tower directly, but it has a lot of health. This is where you actually want to go. Hang on. I'm gonna teleport. Te okay. Right, teleport is the go elsewhere. Return in this mode sends you to base. This time I'm actually gonna do something very stupid. I'm gonna go oppressor. Notice how slow this thing is. So the reason I'm going here is because they got an oppressor going north. They are pushing our north real hard, but we have south pushed off a lot. So I have basically three abilities. A steam release, which is knocking everyone back that's around me. 30,000 tons missile, this is the big one. It deals a potency of one million to all objects near the point of impact. That is an absurd amount of damage. They're also hitting our top. You see that chunk that just happened up there? That's because their oppressor's doing some work. But that, is also why I'm doing. I need to get a little bit ahead here. Come on, launch the missile, launch the missile, launch the missile. All right, now I might be in a bit of a pickle here. So I have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, 
what? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get targeted. I am gonna be in a world of hurt. I'm gonna be able to get like two missiles off, and then that's it. I am. I'm basically dead here. Uh oh. All right. No point sticking around. And I'm dead. So yeah, that almost took it out. But unfortunately, our top tower is gone. Which is not good. So that means our base is open. We need to push south. Uh-oh. So I see that here in the middle, there is an oppressor. Uh, we need to kill that. Because there's a way to attack your base directly from down here. Someone got in the mech? Good. Where are we going? So yeah, uh, we just took nine points of damage. So yeah, uh, C and D. Uh, A has 100. C has 24. That ain't good. D has 20, 50, which they need to get in a mech now. F needs to get into a mech now. We're on Alliance E. Engage the enemy to the south, quickly! I can fall down here. There we go. So, uh, by doing that, allied with the Falcons, what's gonna happen is that, starting in the south lane, if anyone here could kindly do your thing, oh boy. Back up. Yeah, seriously, get in the mech and protect the mech. That's the point of this boat. Yeah, I'm at uh, level three right now. Not particularly great. Four right now. Alliance E, we have a cruise chaser. So now we are able to attack their base, but they are getting very close to our base. Not very good. Get out of here. Oh, but we got a Brute Justice incoming. Oh, that ain't good. Oh, that ain't good. Uh oh. Oh, that ain't good. Oh, that could be bad. Bad, bad, bad. Oh, that is so... I almost died. Wow. Also not very good. They're making a big push south. Hey, look! The gunbreaker who died after I hit my thing. All right, they're getting the tanks. That's not great. Not the worst. Oh, oh, I should not be on the tracks. So if you're standing on the tracks and that train comes by, you instantly die. Get inside the tank. Get in the tank, Shinji. Go, 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 go. All right. So, one tower's down. I already see that we have one of those out. Let's just do that. So, chasers are much better on defense. They're the all around tank. Uh, not all around. They're the all around mech you're going to want. But also, they got a massive push incoming. It's a little more than absurd. 
That's good. All right, so, ooh, Gob Tank is gonna show up in a minute and a half, and we're also soaring a little higher, which is nice. No one's at 20 yet, which is a little disturbing. I right, push it south a little bit. All right, oh, not good. Yeah, the Gobby is a little very resilient, but not that resilient. to do as much damage as I can. There we go. BJ down. Ah, yes, this person's doing the depressor strat. I'm going to stand right in the middle of this bomb because it's not going to do much. Oh, we have a Dragoon who's at level 20. That ain't good. I'm dead. I am so dead. Oh, boy. this one it's gonna be a very brutal fight and there's oh yeah they're gonna get that tank oh I think good oh hang on get the mid get the mid now I think that tank might win the game Go. Yeah, there we go. This is what we like to see. If we can get this tank, it should go on the north route. Very good. Oh, there is a massive south push. Holy smokes, that is a massive south push. one of these for, you know, little extra. Now next we have a gob crate, which has one of everything, but it happens so late in the game it barely matters. But yeah, there's not a whole lot I can do here. I'm just one person. Oh, no. I haven't spotted. Uh oh I'm out. Ow. Hey, ugh. 18 stacks. All right, uh, my team has a thing. Okay. We need to push south, push something. Literally anything. Looks like south is going to be the way to go here. Go. 
Get up here. That's a lot. Big push coming in south. Oh boy, that is not good. Okay, I'm gonna head up the cannons. Get in the cannon. This will do a lot of damage. Okay, player some warlock only. Yeah, that ain't good. Oh no, you don't. I see you. I see you down there. They know exactly where to stand, so I missed them. Really? I don't think we're winning this one. Definitely not winning this one. Wow. Unfortunately, when you start losing and have to go on defense this late, there's no recovery, which sucks. Yeah, defeat. Ouch. That hurts. And that's basically what Rival Wings is to me. You win, you lose. You win, you lose. You lose, you win. It's pretty much a 50-50 coin toss on whether or not you actually win. And there's hardly any comeback mechanics that really matter, so... It really becomes a massive snowball fight. And I really don't like that. Not to mention you have 48 people, and if you have one team that is just struggling, you're basically down four people, and that's not very good. Not to mention the soaring high when the other team has a lot of that. They get their abilities quicker, they hit harder, they take slightly less damage, so that increases the snowball by a lot. And this mode is kind of abandoned. I say kind of. It's not like they haven't tried messing with it, but... I understand why they don't really have this be a very well focused at PvP thing. Crystal Con Crystalline Conflict, that is the PvP mode essentially. But um, yeah, Rival Wings, as fun as it can be, it also hurts when you lose, especially when you have people who just don't know. You have to have a lot of encyclopedic knowledge to know what mech to use, when to use it, how to how to try and make a comeback, but honestly... Oh, Gob Tank. Here we go. Perfect example. If that Gob Tank goes to the enemy team, and then it goes north, or rather, south. Yeah, ready for the southern deployment for the Gobby. So, yeah. It, that tank will go south, which means this lane is going to get pushed more. And as we're trying to defend here, they're going to get the free Gobby, who's also going to push that lane a lot more. Which really, really hurts in its so Here we go here. someone, anyone. I don't like that. Oh, I do not like that. Yeah, y'all need to slow down a bit for me. No. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that ain't good. Okay. Um. At this point, they basically have it, so they win. That's literally how I view it.
I'm still gonna try, darn it, but man, I have really never seen this go to the team that doesn't win. But we'll see if we can pull it off. So at this point, we just need to push south as hard as we can. Hold. Yeah, nope. Yeah, at this point, we need to try and get as much Cerulean as possible. And they may have a team running around doing Cerulean uh, guarding. You could have a team that is solely dedicated to just making sure the enemy does not get any Cerulean at all whatsoever. I'm going to pull up ahead a little bit because every so often these things uh, will spawn in. Oh, dear. gonna run It's got like 35 seconds, which, oh dear. Yeah, I need to take care of this thing as soon as possible. Get up there. Just, oh, come on. Flash charge. Ow, that hurts. Really? Really? Oh, this is not good. Yeah, my party is zero, by the way. Yeah, we don't have any... Yeah, we're losing this one hardcore. All right, well, we have a chance for a brute justice. I'm going I'm to use it real quick. All right, brute justice. No, nope. someone already has it. All right, cruise chaser time. the mercenary which means they're pushing down south none of that got me any soaring high why even bother at this point and they're gonna destroy the engine they're gonna get that tank go. Some for my team. Not a lot. Problem 
struggle with this mode also is that some classes are just so much better than others. The same ones that are really good in front lines. It's stupid. Like they just cannot decide how to balance. Yeah, see, they already have a monk that's at level 20. Oh boy. Point me sticking around in the tank because I'm basically dead weight. Get some more civilian tanks. That one tank, and they are just steamrolling. Seven stacks, yay. And we have no ceruleum. We do everything on this team. All right, Jasper's gonna try and go for something, I guess. Yeah, uh, this. Hey, go ahead and stand there. I dare you. I dare you. Get the mid, get the mid, get the mid, get the mid. Nope, we're not going to mid. <laughs> they got way too many people there. That was Discord on my end. Yeah. At a certain point, it just does not matter. Is there anything important up here? Uh, oh. Okay, that's what that is. All right, yeah, man of duty. Ouch, two and five, that is not my proudest moment. One more, let's just do one more, huh? Maybe I'm gonna quit Discord here, so that way we don't get more interruptions from my desktop being a desktop. Yeah, so yeah, I have desktop audio on for my uh, for the recordings solely because uh, when people raid or you know eventually future uh, alerts, it will actually be heard on stream. At least I think advanced audio properties. Let me just make sure. Alerts. Yeah, desktop audio. Yeah, it should be going through. That's not default alerts are there, I guess. Oh, why would default alerts even do that? Hang on. Default alerts. Uh, let me just go. This is what happens when I need to try and figure out what. Wait a second. Default alerts wouldn't even have any audio. 
Uh, no, no, just, just work, please. Advanced audio. Say the Elgato needs to go through. Desktop audio needs to go through. There's like a second. Elgato, camera. Default alerts. There shouldn't be any audio for that literally whatsoever. It's not even showing up on my audio mixer, so why is it showing up in advance? I don't know. Yay, streaming! Rival Wings attendant. Yep. Uplander desires knowing of Rival Wings. Soft Nox makes Uplander's brain case wet for many tongue flaps. So you can talk to this guy about all the stuff. Uh, here's the overview Machina, Mammoth Steam Cannons, and Soaring. You have Hidden Gorge. Yeah, there's another map here that they used to have, but they just don't anymore. Right now I'm at 78 wins. 77. Okay. I mean, I started the day off at like 71, so 77 is pretty good. I try and get at least a couple per day. Uh, tomorrow is going to be Splatfest grinding. First, a little bit off camera, so that way I don't spend all three hours trying to grind all the way up to uh, ruler rank. And that's going to be a fun time. And that's going to be starting in about 30 minutes. So this will be the last match for the stream. I'm going to end things off a little early today, just so that I have enough time to set up the recording for Splatfest. for everybody to click the check mark that says yes I'm here yeah, the storm private here I think yep says something about the uh, this area the CC attendant for crystal conflict there's also a front lines attendant which is the massive 24 24 no 24 versus 24 versus 24 battle it's wild Honestly, if I was to fix this mode, um, stopping the snowballing, namely mid, because the god thing basically determines who wins. As soon as that shows up first, whoever gets that wins. Yeah, it really shouldn't spawn that soon in the beginning, but then again, also, it's a Dota-like, but you don't get any... Dota leveling up, which is kind of important for the mode. Because, yeah, certain levels, like, oh, yeah, you kill a low-level uh, character as a high-level character, you're only going to get so much XP, right? So it kind of slows you down because leveling up in Dota is exponentially more. It's a little, I think they added it some time ago where they changed uh, the XP rates. I haven't played that game in a while. Yeah, ideally, the higher up you go, the more XP it takes to get up to a really high level. There's also balancing around, like, level 8, I think it was originally. But yeah, in this mode, anytime you kill someone, you always go up by one, regardless of what level they are, which, that is not cool. All right, uh, way too many people here. Yeah, nope. All right, there we go. We got one soaring. Dark Knight, thank you. Oh no, not good. No. Shield, shield! So another thing that really sucks about this mode is that there are pre-mates. And I guarantee you there's at least two pre-mates on that team. Just because of the number of Dark Knights and Dragoons. It is awful. I'm not dead yet, but I will be. Yeah. This nonsense. Yes, I know I shouldn't complain about, you know, pre-made teams in a mode that, you know, encourages cooperation. But man, it's so obvious in this mode. Right, ready for a northern deployment. There go 
goes to Bunk. Buys us a little time. There goes a Summoner. Two stacked. Too good. Not at all. Okay. I don't know. If we're not going to get the northern engagement because, hey, look, that pushes it so forward. That Dark Knight is now invincible, which is a really annoying thing with Dark Knight PvP. They drop themselves at 1 HP, but they literally cannot die. Until now. Knock it off. but we ain't winning this one. Yeah, this guy's already at level 16. That's a little fun. And why is no one getting in a tank? Or a mech? Already getting ready for a northern deployment. It's stupid. I don't have anything. All right. Good. Get on the Ozma. Get on the Ozma. as I mentioned about this mode, uh, there are mech limits. You can have all the cruise chasers you want, 
but you can only have two of the oppressors and you can only have two brute justices but that also depends on how many uh, towers have been destroyed yeah this ain't good. No point in even trying right now there's nothing that can really stop this at this point it's GG. Yes. Not that it matters. How bad did I do this time? Uh, 3, 2, and 13, so not that terribly, but 
Oof. Yeah, they got a 25 1 and 37 monk. Like, ouch. That is. Yeah, this mode is way too snowball to actually be fun. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for my stream today. Tomorrow, starting at 3 o'clock, it's going to be an early stream. It is Splatoon Splatfest time going all the way to Ruler. Hopefully, get that done before 6 o'clock. And, uh, well, until next time, everybody. Let's just wave to the camera. Take care.